Hi friends, thanks a lot for the warm uh, feedback and dropping in uh, mails with your concerns and questions. Quite a few of these came in from some young kids, some young girls, so I thought let me talk a little bit about it. And I spoke to one of the youngsters whom I'd worked with, a bright young girl, around 24 years old, an MBA from SDA Bakani. And she is joining us today from Mumbai. You know, my first question for her is, you know, in today's era, where we really, really talk about women empowerment and uh, we seem to have uh, be saying that we've uh, now become a more liberal society. How has it been for her growing up uh, in a city like Mumbai, in a metropolitan? Did she feel any gender biases? Yes, it is sad, but also very true that even in today's day and age, we are still living with so many biases against women. This one particular incident I very distinctly remember is uh, back from my pre or, or very early MBA days. You know, I just got admitted into a big school and I called up this distant friend because he's really smart, very talented, young, doing very well for himself. And so I thought, okay, let me seek some advice from him. And I call him up and I tell him that, you know, you inspired me. I would love to get some career advice from you and uh, that I have just started my MBA. And what he told me next, I was really stunned to hear that because he was all like, really, what career ambitions, what goals? I mean, you will do an MBA that in itself is a great achievement, you know, after all, you have to get married and, and that's about it. Life will go on. You will figure something for yourself. Don't worry so much. You know, men have that pressure. You will do just fine. And that really surprised me that even in the 21st century, such comments, such notions, such thoughts still exist among both men and women equally. Wow, we, uh, we heard uh, Rashna talk about how even in today's era, uh, biases do exist. And I had talked a little bit about social programming in one of my earlier videos. Clearly shows how the social programming is still at work, where a lot of young men and women are growing up with biases against women or stereotyping women into much softer roles. Um, Rashna, there's another question for you. Um, so as you entered, uh, you know, you started off with your career, how safe did you feel at work? Did you feel that the workplace was very safe, unbiased towards women, or you had any roadblocks there yet again? So, you know, workplace harassment was just another theoretical topic in my MBA curriculum until I personally fell a victim to it. So, I was in another city, a new city altogether and uh, I, I received one fine day, very randomly out of the blue, a lewd image from one of my uh, colleagues. And when I receive it for a while, I'm just confused, wondering, you know, if he sent it by mistake, if he might delete it or, you know, not knowing what to do next. But to my surprise, he doesn't delete, he does nothing about it. And then not knowing what to do next, I just, you know, call up a few friends and seek their advice that what should I do? Should I flag him? Should I ignore it? I was clueless. It was a first for me. And funnily, I got some amazing responses. Some of them told me, you know what? Men will be men. Ignore it. Some others said, why haven't you reported it already? You should have reported it the second it happened. And some others said, you know what? Maybe it was a mistake. Let's see if he does it again. And Anyway, regardless, I went ahead and reported him to my line manager and thinking in hindsight, I feel like I did the right thing. Had I listened to those who told me to wait and watch until it happens again or completely ignore it, I don't know how many more women would have had to face it after me. And you know, that, that day made me realize that we should let go of these inhibitions. There is no reason for us to feel guilty or give somebody a second chance. Because what is wrong is wrong, regardless of whether it's done, you know, by mistake. Was it mentioned? Was it meant for somebody else? Was it meant for you? Regardless of anything, it is very important that we report it to the right person. And more, in most cases, the right person is your immediate manager. And what I what I also appreciate is that my line manager, who was a woman, she immediately immediately flagged it, uh, took a corrective action against him, and also assured me that a training session will be held on workplace ethics so that this never repeats again. And 
you know or after a personal experience that is my only urge to young women and men alike you know any kind of harassment please please go ahead and flag it there is no reason for you to feel guilty or have second thoughts on it and thirdly rachna um again i repeat the fact that how you went to a very very progressive uh, private b school sta bakani so i'm i'm assuming your parents were have been very supportive for you to pursue your career uh how conducive did you find your environment around you uh, in terms of your family your friends and your career choices uh you also relocated to another city so how did that all go for you how has been your experience one year post mba so far yes actually there were a lot of roadblocks or so to say constraints that i faced while planning my career just because i was a girl or or just because we are women and and of course these constraints came as as a matter of concern from everybody's end but but there's still roadblocks right so i remember when uh, i was deciding to move to gurgaon for a career stint um uh, most of my relatives and close friends came around advising that you know it's not a safe city why do you need to go there you can find something here it's not important you can let go off no matter how good the opportunity is you know had it been your brother then it becomes all the more important for him to take the right career choice but since you're a girl you can let it go you can find another opportunity or things like will you be able to manage you know will you be able to live alone I mean why not aren't we aren't these experiences to be able to make you independent to be able to give you that experience so that you can live independently but again just because you're a woman all these questions come up but uh, i think a little support is all you need my parents are supportive enough to let me go ahead and take this opportunity and i must say i had the best one year of my life uh the one year stint in a different city collectively taught me so much more than you know 20 25 odd years of living with people living under the shelter so man or woman i think we all deserve equal opportunity right and we all must go for what we seek and and our gender shouldn't come in the way of it well it's rather unfortunate that these biases still exist Uh, the good part is we find more and more stronger women like Rashna, supported by their immediate family, who are wanting to fight it out, who are wanting to stand tall and build a career of their own, follow their dreams and passion. And I'm sure a lot of them, simply by speaking up, like Rashna did, do find the support systems that they need to flourish. So my only tip over here for young girls would be. follow your dreams find your supporters speak up ask for help and do not be scared of pursuing a dream that you really wish to if you have to relocate do so do it in a safe manner if you feel unsafe again ask for help but don't give up easily you really have to be a fighter even today to stand out in a world that's still dominated by men but has equal opportunities for women too all the best kids And if you have any comments, questions, do drop in in the comment box or email me at rishya.copperdiaries at gmail.com. Thanks again.